Hi guys. We're finally making our Cuba video that oh. everybody has been asking for. Finally. Sorry for the delay. Yeah. We're gonna be sharing some tips and information and some of our personal experiences to make your Cuba trip easier. <laughs> so we're gonna give you guys our top 10 tips that we felt were most helpful while we were in Cuba. Yes. And we either wish somebody had told us or we actually did do our research because we do our research we when we travel. Really did, <laughs> we, we did, yeah. But there's also some stuff that you find out when you get there. Yes. And, and we you had an experience. awesome Airbnb host that helped us a lot. Yes. Yes. That was a huge factor, which we will talk about. So the number one asked question about Cuba, how do you get there? Everybody has this idea in their head that we can't go to Cuba for good reason because there was a, an embargo that lasted 50 or 60 years where U.S. could not... Um, travel to Cuba or do any business with Cuba. I could talk about it forever, but I'm not here for the history lesson. Mm -hmm. I'm here short on time, trying to give you some info about this trip. That's right. So the visa is how you get there. Yes, and the visa was very easy to get. We actually got it at the airport before we left to Cuba. You get it along with your boarding pass, and um, I think it's $50 if you go through JetBlue and $100 for American Airlines. So if you want to do the cheaper option, go with JetBlue. So basically what we're trying to tell you is it's not that hard to go to Cuba. <laughs> very smooth, very easy. Okay, so the second thing we're going to talk about is money. So your credit card and debit card does not work in Cuba at all. Like you can't withdraw any money. So that means that you have to take cash only that's actually scary if it you is. think about it because we can always <laughs> just run to an atm yes. for anything and you're on an island where there's very little internet and there's it's scary to be stuck without money <laughs> very so you have to um bring as much money as you can and you have to exchange it at the airport once you get to Cuba. So when you are at the Cuban airport, you can exchange some of your money if you want. If you don't want to do all of it because you don't know how much you're going to spend, you have the option to exchange it at a, I think it's called an Extesa, something like that. And you can find these like in Havana and stuff like that and you can exchange them there as well. Okay, our third tip, which is so near and dear to my heart. <laughs> Wi-Fi. <laughs> How can her and I go on vacation without Wi-Fi? You already know the We're pictures. Like fucking fiends. <laughs> I just can't. I can't do it. We don't realize it because we live in the U.S. and we have it at our fingertips all the time. Oh my! I don't know how they do it. There's no Wi-Fi in Cuba, guys. At all. It breaks my heart to even. Well, there say is Wi-Fi, but you have to pay for it. I think they just actually made these little parks like legal, but there's very few central park areas where everybody gathers <laughs> to use the i guess public wi-fi the only wi-fi that's legal on the island and uh, you have to buy cards that are how much a dollar fifty for an hour of wifi. okay so you have to do it like an hour at a time and it's super sketch wi-fi anyway like it comes and goes <laughs> we, we bought <laughs> So many. We bought a card and we scratched it off, put the number in, and we literally were online for like not even seconds. a minute, and it just went off. It cu it cuts off when it wants. We were like addicts. We were like scratching yeah. new ones. I think we bought like fifty cards for like. Bitch, we bought a lot of cards. We did buy a lot. We but, bought a lot. I yeah. took a picture of like we all like the fiending. scratched. So yes, my point is, when you go to Cuba, do not count on having Wi-Fi. Plan all your excursions, your restaurants, your Google Maps, all that stuff. Like, you need to screenshot everywhere Do you're going. Do your research. You have to plan ahead because when you don't have internet, yeah. your whole life is like, oh, what do I do with everything? It's not like any other vacation where you can just go on Google and search what to do around. Exactly. There. You have to know. You can't search food near me. Yeah. Um, best club to go to. No nothing will work. So, it's just... It's like you're back in time. <laughs> yeah. That's what Cuba it's is like. It's kind of cool, but yeah. So don't, don't think that you're going to just get there and be on the internet all the time. So now we're going to talk about our fourth thing, Airbnb. 
I booked the Airbnb, so I'm gonna do most of the talking on this. I just wanna say, <laughs> on all of our trips, she does the Airbnb. I do. I find flights, I find things, excursions, tours, where we can go hiking, all the pretty, picturesque no hiking, no hiking. beaches. <laughs> I like the beaches. She, she is very particular about where she sleeps. Yes. I, I will sleep in hostels, I, just, I don't care. Like, I, I'm very low maintenance. Bitch, uh, no, I'm not going to share a bathroom with some freaking strangers. I don't care. No, baby. Anyway. So, I will put on the description the Airbnb that we stayed at. We had an amazing host. I cannot stress this enough. Like, if it wasn't for her, like, I don't know. She made our trip. She really did. Um, so, first things first, she actually included, if you want, for like, what, $6 oh, extra yeah. a day? Um, Breakfast. They cook you this Cuban breakfast daily, which I think was very helpful because that way you can save time in the morning and you can just get that out of the way. You don't have to spend time looking for places to eat. Um, so that was good. She also provided us with snacks to buy. So she had like a list and told us what the price is for each snack, which is helpful because it's kind of hard to find snacks out there. And she gave us a phone. So your phone doesn't work in Cuba. And it was really helpful because we could, you know, just call her if we needed anything and we could communicate with like our taxi drivers and stuff like that. So that was good. And she also provided us with Wi-Fi cards to buy. Um, oh, yeah. She had them like on a magnet on the fridge. She had, like a ton of them. So, oh, she was so... We used all of them. <laughs> she was so accommodating. She's like, I have like... Four Wi-Fi cards attached to the fridge. And then, like, when she came back to check on us an hour later, they were gone. gone. And we are like, can you, can you bring, like, 20 back? <laughs> <laughs> so that was really helpful. And um, she also made the arrangements for our taxis. Like, when we were going to go on our tours and stuff, she made that happen. So that was super convenient for us. Um, also, the location of the Airbnb I think it was a really good location. It's in Old Havana, and it was close to a Wi-Fi park. A really good location. Yeah, it was. So at times when our Wi-Fi didn't work at the house, we could just go to the park right across the street, and that was helpful. And also it was very secure. Like literally right above our door in the front of the Airbnb, there was cameras there, and we needed like we had to go through a gate first and then upstairs to our room. So it was very secure. So I felt really safe there. Cuba's really safe anyway, though, I, I should just mention. It is, very safe. It felt good to have all that extra stuff, like when we first got there, but I think you realize after you spend a little while there, nothing's going to happen yeah. to you. We were literally walking the freaking streets at, at night. night. In, the <laughs> oh, yeah. in the hood. I forgot about that. <laughs> and it was so nice. Like, everyone was just outside, very friendly. Like, we didn't I, feel I've like... I never felt so safe, yeah. seriously. It Traveling. Was nice. So that was the Airbnb. Um, like I said, we're gonna put it in the description. I definitely recommend you get that Airbnb because she was amazing and made it so much easier. Number five, my favorite, my passion. <laughs> <laughs> so when you think of Cuban food, oh, I, I used to live in Miami and Cuban food is like, oh, makes my mouth water. Just like the rice and beans and I'm not, I don't eat meat that much, so not so much ham. But when you're in Cuba, Cuban food is like hard to come by. Kind of. Or it's just not what I expected it to be. Anyway, I was disappointed by the food. There was a lot of Spanish style restaurants. So like tapas and stuff like that, small dishes, a lot, a lot of bread. Everywhere you go, oh, I can only eat so much of it. Yeah, there was they serve you bread before a meal. Every other meal on the menu is served with bread. It's just too much, yeah. too much bread and too much meat. It's very hard if you eat vegetarian or vegan. It's really hard to find good dishes there. What was the best meal we had? Do you think that restaurant by the Malecon? Don't remember the name, but it had some good food. Oh, that was finally authentic yeah. Cuban food. It was yeah. like rice and beans. So there and, are some, you know, yeah. it's not like everything is horrible. Like the food, the, you can find really good spots. But like I said, we, you have to do your research, you yeah. know, and, or ask the locals and then try things out. And cause they don't have like condiments and stuff. I heard. So another thing is she mentioned that our Airbnb host 
um, stocked us up with snacks. That was a lifesaver. I tore them shoes up. Oh my God. Like we were just like, okay, we'll just have a couple every now Jeez. and then. We ate every snack she had in the house <laughs> because <laughs> there's no snacks sold on like corner stores and stuff. So I think what we spent the most money on was oh, true. taxis. And we didn't think it was gonna be that expensive, but it is, and I think a lot of people don't expect need to, that. Yeah, so they need to hear this. Because we didn't expect it. We didn't know. Um, so if you stay in Havana, um, you do wanna branch out and go to different cities because there's only so much you can do in Havana. So we took a trip from Havana to Vinales, which was three hours, and the round trip to go to Vinales and back was 160, I think. I think, yeah. And then we took another trip to Varadero, which was an hour and a half, and that was 140 round trip. So, you know, it's a little out there with the price, um, so you do want to keep that in mind, uh, because we didn't know. We were like, oh shit, so we had to take more money out. And um, yeah, so taxis are expensive, so make sure that you plan for that. Oh, fun fact. If you take one of the cute old-fashioned cars, which are everywhere, and we were like obsessed with for the first five minutes we were there, those cars are actually cheaper to ride in than if they do have any modern cars, which is rare. Um, they're cheaper than the modern cars. So, random, yeah. but... And also, um, one thing to know is that the taxi driver will stay with you the entire time. So we were like at the beach and he will stay in the car for like hours until we're ready to go back. So you will have that same taxi take you there and back. Get lunch, do whatever. They don't yeah. leave you anywhere. Which so cool. a lot of the Caribbean islands do that. Yeah. They do. I feel like we've, we've come across that a lot. But it's weird because it's different than the U.S. So it's, I guess, good to no know. No Ubers in Cuba. <laughs> no, definitely <laughs> Our seventh tip is really just going to be our excursions or tours or whatever we did while we were there. I'm just going to try to throw out like some really fun stuff. The, um, we went to the countryside. Um, it's called Vinales and it's like um, uh, tobacco fields, horseback riding. So, so beautiful to go horseback riding in that country. Oh my God. Yeah, like awesome. just breathtaking. And it was a beautiful day. So pray for good weather. Um, besides that, we pretty much slept the whole car ride because it was three hours. It was long as shit. Another thing to do outside of Havana is go to one of the beaches. There's, I'm actually shocked at how beautiful the beach was. So beautiful. It's like a hidden gem because you hear about all these other beaches. We're very big on the Caribbean. We've been to so many of the Caribbean islands. We love beautiful beaches. I think we've been to probably the number one beach in the world. I'm a beach person. And, um, yeah, I was, like, blown away by Cuba's beaches. It was beautiful. Well, we only went to one. We went to, what is it? Baradero. Baradero. And it was a one and a half hour drive, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. So beautiful. And this was during a windy day, which is supposedly, like, the bad time and the beach is ugly. It was gorgeous. She said it was ugly. Our host said, you don't want to go to the beach today. It's ugly. That beach was so gorgeous. Definitely top like three beaches I've ever been to. So we lied to you. We're not giving you 10 tips because we are super unorganized and this is our first YouTube video. And I'm all fucking tired. And I have to go, <laughs> I have to go somewhere too. So, one last super duper important tip. The toilet. Super important. Love. I think it's important. Very girl, me too. It's something we I take for, all the time. We take for granted. Um, bring your own toilet paper everywhere you go in Cuba. And coins. You have to pay for bathrooms. You may or may not get toilet paper. Sometimes you have to pay for it. You should carry it with you. The toilets don't flush and they don't have toilet seats. <laughs> When we were on our way. How do you shit? Like, so yeah, if you got a boo-boo, boo-boo in your Airbnb. Because if not, you going to get into some shit. <laughs> Literally. The Cuban people are so nice. So freaking nice. Like, it, it's unbelievable how humble and just, just so welcoming to us who are Americans. Maybe, you know, they might feel some type of way about that. No. I, I was like blown away by how friendly they were they were very friendly and people were so like 
I don't know, like it's different. They're not glued to their phones like here, you know, so everyone's outside, the kids are playing outside. People so nice. actually know their neighbors there, you know. It was just really beautiful to see that because we're so used to, you know, always being on our phones when we eat and just Anti-social. Like, Anti-social and over there it's like everyone's outside, you know, so it's cool. They're communicating. Everybody That's when not they supposed to be. Yeah, when they leave work, I think they probably go home, eat dinner. And then they go outside and hang out with their neighbors yeah, for a few so hours. Going on, Everybody does. Talk. Kids are outside playing, dancing, <laughs> practicing yeah. baseball with, on the walls. Oh my god, I forgot about those dancing kids. It was just so cute. Like, it's so weird that we don't do that. What's wrong with us? No. What's I don't wrong even know who my with this is. country? It's bad. It's bad. <laughs> we gotta get off of our phones, so like yeah. like we're about to right now, because it's bedtime. Yes. So yeah, Cuba, beautiful. The people are beautiful. Um, so we definitely recommend that you go visit it. But like we said before, do your research, um, take notes, look at other video blogs, you know, if people have been to Cuba also, because that's what we did to find out information of where to eat and all that stuff. So just do your research. I always use TripAdvisor, by the way. Yes, TripAdvisor. I used YouTube. I looked at videos. And then we kind of put our stuff together and made it happen. Yes. And um, Airbnb is very important. So make sure you get a good one so that they can help you out with your stay. And that's it. Do you have I else? just want to say that Cuba's a beautiful place to visit. And some people told me before I went that it was trashy and old. Yes, Cuba is old. Yes, some of the buildings are falling apart because they don't repaint them because it's really expensive. Don't let that take away from wanting to go to Cuba. No, people ain't got nothing to do with that. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. It's an amazing place. There's no place in the world like Cuba. Where are you going? So anyway, We're she just... forgot to say what every YouTube sensation says. <laughs> subscribe! Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. subscribe to our channel because we will bring more videos your way. And we're going to have better quality because we're recording off our iPhone right now. Um, no, she but... started. Oh, what was I going to say? Oh, please give us your feedback of what else you want to see. Yeah. Because we're new to this. We're probably going to do videos on other places that we've traveled to. Yes. But anyways, let's not talk too much right now. So that was our Cuba experience and tips. And we will check you guys out next time. Let us know about your Cuba experience.